Okay, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to reseal the lower unit from this 1978 115 horsepower Johnson outboard. So you're going to need a uh, going to need a couple of special parts for this. This is just some of them. You're also going to need a bearing puller. Um, I've showed you that in previous videos. Don't need to show it again. You'll see it in use anyway. I've got the seal kit. I've got the uh, Johnson Evernerd version. So we have a uh, seal installer, a seal installer, a seal installer, and guide pins. Um, guide pins are kind of important, doing it the way I'm doing it, but you don't necessarily need to buy the guide pins. Let me show you what they are. You'll see them in use in a second. So all they are is a rod that's threaded on the end. There you go. So what those do is thread into where these screws go and allow the bearing carrier to find its home, if you will. So you don't need to buy those. You could just use a piece of threaded rod that has the same thread pitch diameter, all nine yards. Use those instead. I don't know what these cost. I don't think they were that expensive. I want to say like 10 bucks each or something. So it's, it's doable. So let's do the easy stuff first. Shift rod. You're supposed to use a tool to take this out and align it correctly. I'm not going to be doing that. What I'm going to be doing is cleaning the base of it here. Just marking it with a sharpie where it needs to go. So the theory, I put it right back onto that line. Don't need to worry about measuring and adjusting it. So just unscrews to come out of there. And it's out. Now I'll remove the four screws on the water pump, pull that out, as well as the six screws on the, uh, whatever this thing's called, pull that off. Now get the water pump off here. Looks like the dry shaft o-ring made its way down there. No big deal for us. Now you can see the impeller. Looks like somebody uh, started this thing without it being in the water for a while. Um, lighting's kind of poor, but the veins are kind of twisted and look a little melted on the end. That's probably what happened. Miller's a little stuck. Spray some PB Blaster on there. Water pump come, came out. There's a key right here. It fell out. Then we get this plate off. And there's the base of our uh, drive shaft seal. Remove this. All it takes is some uh, little bit of impact. And she comes right off. Now I remove the four screws here. Those seem a bit tight. We'll uh, run a tap and die down the uh, holes and wire wheel the screws before I put them back on. Now, to break the seal here isn't too hard, but it ain't always easy. I'll be using the spanner wrench here inside of the holes just to kind of break it loose. Now once it's loosened like that, you can get the screwdriver I just lost. Let's get this exhaust foot out of the way while we're at it. The gasket there. All right. So I'm going to put some upward pressure while wiggling it back and forth. And out she comes. You can't see, but there's a screw head right down inside of there. Well, there's four. There's one in each little slot here. So I need to uh, get in there and pull those out. Also, you can see the oil puddling back there. That is why we're uh, resealing this. Here's the puller setup I'm going to be using for this. The uh, long screws are kind of the important part, along with the Evernote puller and the center bolt. 
those long screws go into these two holes to pull it out. Now, some advice here, clean out these holes before you put those screws in. You don't want to strip one of these out. If you do, you're going to be fighting getting this thing out of there the whole time. So I'm going to be installing my 5 16 by 18 tap. I'll be using my uh, Leslie, Leslie, I don't know how to pronounce it, tap socket. Because you ain't getting a tap handle in there, obviously. Well, with that out of the way, we can install our uh, puller now. Our puller has these two uh, holes outside of here. I don't know what those are for. Don't use those. All right, top bolts all the way in. I'm going to put some lube on our uh, puller bolt here. It's recommended to do it. I uh, do it from time to time. Now is one of those times. Puller bolt is up, kind of taut. I have a 7 8 inch uh, socket on the end of my little wrench. So now we just tighten it down and hope it comes out. Let me go ahead and get the handle in here. Not a bad spot for the handle. Alright, it's pretty well out now at this point. Yeah, it's disgusting. Let me tell. Well, I'm going to have some cleaning to do, but that's how to uh, safely remove that. Here's our bearing carrier. Kind of disgusting, but they always are. So I'm going to clean this up. Take the seals out, O-ring. Um, what you want to look at is what the inside of this bearing looks like. This one still looks new, clean, and shiny. If it was kind of rusty or rust colored, you can guarantee every other bearing inside of there is going to look the same way. This looks nice. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and vote and all the bearings are okay. Chances are this is lower unit won't give us any problems. All right, this next part is completely optional. I'm going to be using my large uh, ring pliers to go in there and pull out the, uh, I don't know, big huge snap rings to get a look at the gears inside of there to make sure there's no issues. Right, here is where our guide pin is going to come in handy. Well, don't see anything so far, but that could just be because there's a massive gear in the way. I'm going to use the tilt and jiggle approach to get that out of there. And there comes our reverse gear, our thrust washer, and our thrust bearing. I see uh, no teeth damage, minimal teeth wear, other than greasy gunk I pulled out on the way up. Looks pretty nice. Um, if I wanted to pull the entire assembly out of there, I got to undo the pinion nut, which means torquing it back down, which means a whole long lengthy process, none of which I feel like doing, so I'm going to get in there with a flashlight and have a look. Well, rotating the drive shaft, that'll do just fine. You'd still be able to see everything. Well, I see no uh, missing teeth, missing chunks, no uh, metal debris of any type. Uh, a little hard to see the uh, clutch dog teeth, but from what I can see, they look perfectly fine as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and vote this lower unit's a uh, good rebuild of the lower unit, which means I will now spend the money to put the new seals in it. Go ahead and get it back together. Usually that's a good idea. Now I'm going to be cleaning the, uh, whatever they're called, clips, 
as well as our little plate here. At least they look a lot better cleaned up. You gotta get this thing on a uh, downward angle. Right about like so. Now you gotta be wary of the uh, reverse gear thrust washer and thrust bearing. But the reason you want it on a downward angle is so when you go in there to start cleaning away, nothing falls that way. You want all the crud to come out. Um, you're going in there with a, a grill brush. This had a little scraper on the end. You gotta pry that off because that'll just scratch everything up and you don't want that. So I will get started on this. You will not be seeing any of that because my camera's about to die. That board is uh, nice and clean inside the exhaust little hole there. I uh, went ahead and cleaned up the uh, propeller shaft while I was there. And while I was doing the propeller shaft, I figured I might as well do the drive shaft. So those are nice and clean and shiny now. Um, now it is time to start doing the, uh, the seals. I got the uh, bearing carrier soaking in some uh, degreaser junk. So when that's ready, it'll get cleaned up. And then seals. All right, with the bearing carrier decently clean, we can now uh, pull the seals out of it. So the easiest one is obviously going to be the O-ring. Let's rip that out of there. Now, I will go inside of there and clean up all this gunk from the inside of the groove. But now we need to pull out the main seal back there. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. One is to use the actual leavener tool, which is this guy which also has a thread adapter installed onto it to be able to use with their small slide hammer. This is 175 bucks. The thread adapter is, I don't know, 40. Slide hammer is another 70. So if you don't mind spending the money, you can use that. Or you can use what I'm gonna be using, which is a pinion bearing puller tool. This is $16 attached to an old slide hammer. I uh, got it a swap meet for five bucks. Um, if you don't have a slide hammer, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy one. There's other ways to do it. Also, I'm pretty sure you can rent these from an AutoZone or a parts store. Or you can pick up one of these kits. Um, this is a blind hole pull bearing puller set. Uh, it works fine for seals. It also has a slide hammer and a little uh, puller foot. Uh, I use this for all kinds of different seals, but this one being as big as it is, the pinion bearing slide hammer puller will go in there just fine. Yeah, I find it easier to use than set it up on this thing, so I'll be using that. I have it set up in my vise, barely clamped down. You don't want to clamp down on this, all you want to do is the vise to hold it. Um, if you clamp down too much, you run a risk of crushing the inside here, so don't do that. So. Let's go ahead and get this set up. I suppose you could put this in and then screw on the uh, slide hammer, but apparently this is how I'm doing it. And of course, none of this is bolted down. Let's try going up with it. Piece of cake, right? Here are the two back-to-back -back seals that came out of there. Now I'll clean up all that crud and gunk inside. Now this kit is made to fit all kinds of different engines. 
So you have all kinds of different prop shaft seals here. So what you want to do is compare your old ones to what these are. Um, looks like it's got two, have a little larger diameter, two larger diameter ones, but they're a little bit smaller, and then two smaller diameter ones. So our old one, just feeling it here, is the same diameter as these two, outside diameter. Or if we compare it to this one, a little bit smaller. So looks like these two are going to be our ticket. These will save in case we ever work on an engine they fit, but we'll set those off to the side. Now I have the bearing tool sitting in the Arbor Press. I'm going to uh, press in the new seals. You get two. One's going to go down. You don't see the little rubber lip. So it's going to go that way. The second one is going to go opposite, like that. And that's how they're going to go inside of there. So we need to coat the outside of them in our Johnson Evinrude gasket sealing compound. So I brush some on there and just kind of rub it around on there. And that one's ready to be pressed in. So I have the installer tool. Part number for that. It's right there. You don't necessarily need an Arbor Press. You don't necessarily need that tool. You could pretty much do this with a socket and a hammer and have the same result. But this keeps, keeps it even and makes sure it goes in, you know, the correct depth. So I'm now coating the other one in the gasket and sealing compound. Install it onto the tool. And I will press it in. Now it's pushing the lower seal the rest of the way as well, so it's going to get a little tighter here. So now we need to find an O-ring. Looks like this is going to be fun, but got way too many here. The old one's right here, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Well, looks like the uh, smallest one wins. Now put the O-ring back on. Now with the gasket and sealing compound, I'm going to apply it to all the outside edges. And then apply some grease to the inside here. Grease, we use the Evinrude Triple Guard. Maybe the flash wasn't the best idea here, but you can see in there and see what I'm doing. What the? I don't know why that turned off. Ah, oh, whatever. What are you going to do, you know? So, we'll install two guide pins like so. Rotate them around a little bit. All right, now I'll go coat the uh, surfaces in the gasket sealing compound as I just mentioned, and then I'll slide the uh, bearing carrier back in. All right, nice and coated. So this particular one has a little sign right here. It says up, barely see it, but that obviously is going to go up into a line. Our locking plate down there with our guide pin holes which isn't all that easy when there's a big camera in your way of looking but in she goes just like so tap it in a little get started and you want to Kind of make sure things kind of aligned. All right, a seal kit came with four new screws, so I'll be using those. But the thread of each one of them need to be coated in the sealing compound or some type of anti-seize. Probably not crucial. Once you do this, you'll probably get another 10 years out of it. You'll probably never be doing it again. But nice to uh, make sure they are going to come out when the time comes. And I just dropped that down there. All right. All right let's try that again. 
This time with a smidgen of grease on the screw head to hold it into the socket. And it just dropped again, of course. It first screws in, but it's not quite long enough to grab. So I'm going to uh, get the bearing carrier in just a little more. And that did it. So that's one in. Here comes number two. All right, two's in. So you can kind of see the importance of these guide pins, because without them, good luck lining that bottom plate. So I'll get these two tightened down, and I'll pull the guide pins out, install the other two screws. And that completes the bearing carrier. All right, now for the drive shaft seal. Um, one thing you're going to want to check: this. See that shim? It stayed behind. Well, they get kind of oily. It's a pretty good seal there, so I, they uh, they don't always fall off. So keep an eye on that. You don't want to lose them. Um, you're just going to slide it back down over the drive shaft. By the way, this I'll be using the same pinion bearing puller. Fits inside of there. I got it setting the device right now in combination with the little puller legs from my little blind hole puller set. I don't want to have to stand on the bench again and sit there with the slide hammer to pull it up, so I figure this will do just fine. Probably a little easier actually. Well, although if it goes that far, we'll find out right now. So see the problem here? Legs aren't nearly long enough. But, all I gotta do for that is move this guy to the bottom down here and use the uh, piece of our vise to hold it in place for us. So I moved it further down into the uh, little puller jaws there. Puller jaws. Vise, whatever it's called. That should give me enough room to do it. Alright, let's uh, let this guy all squared away. Now you don't want to go in too deep, you're not trying to pull the bearing out, you're just trying to pull out the seal. So keep that in mind. Looking on the inside you can see it's only grabbing the uh, seals, not the bearing. That's the uh, key component there. Yeah, a slide hammer would have been much quicker by the way. Alright, starting to grab right there. my oversized wrench and we'll see how well this works. And out they come. All right, now, same thing as the bearing carrier. We need to press in the new seals for the drive shaft bearing and remove this old o ring, which apparently is giving me problems. Well, you can also see my razor blade is good and sharp. All right, I'll clean that up before I put the o ring back on. Meantime, identify the seals inside of the uh, seal kit, which are these guys, obviously. They go back to back, just the way this other one came out, just like so. And I dropped the seal, that's great. All right, need to coat the outside of the seal with the gasket and sealing compound. I have my seal installer tool, it's right there. Press that inside. There we 
There's the first one installed. Now the second one. Now we use the opposite side of our seal installer. And we line it up best we can. And press it in. And that is our finished result. Now, do you need this special tool? Probably not. You can probably use the socket or a flat piece of metal or something, but the tool's not that expensive. I do enough of these where it's worth buying. All right. Now I'm going to uh, clean out the inside of the uh, groove there. Now I'll be putting the O-ring back on the same spot it came off, which is in the bottom. Looks like this top groove here is actually for oil, make its way around. Now before I put this in, we need to coat the uh, surface of the O-ring here with the gasket and sealing compound. So I'll go do that now. You want enough on there to make sure it's not going to get stuck, but you also want to leave that little hole clear, so keep that in mind. Now it's pretty much ready to go on, but before we do that, we need to grease up the seals here. Let's find where I put my grease. And then just kind of get it in and around there. Alright, now we are almost ready to put this back on. The teeth of the drive shaft spline here, they can get kind of sharp. So what they recommend is putting what's called a seal protector over this, which is basically this rubber cap. So then you can slide the drive shaft bearing down over that without messing up your seals. One I have doesn't fit, so I don't know if I did the wrong one or what happened, but we're going to do a makeshift version of the seal protector here with good old masking tape. Obviously I'm going a little overboard, but that's all you really need to do. So now what we can do is identify where our hole is there. Because that little hole faces forward. Now we slide this over our drive shaft ever so carefully. And down the drive shaft. See this little slot right here? Oil splashes up through there, and that little hole allows our bearing to get nice and lubricated. So that little hole needs to face forward so it aligns with that hole in the lower unit. We then slide our plate down and we get our screws and tighten it down. Each screw gets coated in the Johnson Avenue gasket sealing compound. The reason you do that is they won't seize themselves in there. Alright, now I want to clean up the gasket surfaces along here, uh, but I don't want to do that and get a bunch of crap inside of here. So what I'm going to be doing is loosening the bolts of my holding fixture here, spinning the thing upside down, and then doing it. Gravity will help me make sure nothing gets in there. Now, no reason to videotape the top of my head me sanding something, but I'm going to get started. Alright, just pried out the shift rod bushing, excuse me, shift rod o-ring. Now, the reason you don't have footage of that is because this is what it looked like. Didn't see anything anyway. So what I did, went in from the back here, got my sewing needle, which is a pretty thick one. I stabbed it into the O-ring like so. I then bent the O-ring out of its little crevice using the little tiny needle note or needle here. Then, on the back side, I got my L, pushed it in, and that held it out of place. Then got my flathead and guided it out with the awl and pushed the lip of the o-ring up and got a pair of needle nose and yanked it out the rest of the way. Went a little easier than I thought it would so now I'll see how it goes but getting it back in. Alright, there's our old one, you can tell. It only came with one so it's pretty easy to figure out where it goes. Now somehow this little o-ring needs to go through that little hole. So 
More experimenting time, I suppose. Oh yeah, that'll work. Done. Just kidding. You saw how I got it in. So I pushed... I put it in that way. And then I pushed a lip of the O-ring and the little, little crevice it has to go into. So now my plan is to hold this there to make sure it stays put. And push the rest of this in. Well, let's get the L out of there. Hope for the best, huh? Well, looks like it started. Right, see what I mean? So it's almost there. Just needs to kind of fold in there and. Nope. Oh, that's in there. So, not too bad after all. Alright, just cleaned up the uh, mating surface there, or the gasket surface. Now I'm going to try to pack some grease into that o-ring. That should do it. And if not, as the shift rod goes in, it'll grease it up anyway. Alright. So here's our gasket. Keep in mind both gasket surfaces are already cleaned up. Both sides of this need to get coated in the gasket sealing compound. Alright, I'm going to go set this on the uh, lower. Now, keep in mind, every screw gets coated in the stuff. The sealing compound. Like I said, if you ever take this back apart again, you're going to be glad you did this. Now I'll put the shift rod back in. I need the top of this visible. I need to be able to see my mark. Now, it's a good idea, and recommended. To put some grease on the splines of the shift rod. So, right about there, lines up with our mark still. So there's reverse, the back of the uh, belly shaft is spinning. There's forward, and still spinning. So, we still work. Looks like our line is a little off. Alright, now put this back on. Now, your water pump's going to come with a new one of these. So, the water pump gets installed, place that too. But, I'll just leave that one on there for now. So, now we need to test it. We've already tested our gears. So, I'm going to tighten that down. I don't know if it's rolled away, but you'll we'll find that. And then remove this one. So, now I have my Stevenson pressure tester. If you've never seen one of these, the way they work is you pump it up, it holds pressure. But there's no one-way valve or anything, so when you let go, it instantly drops. So to test it, you can screw this in the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. I think the instructions say to do it from the top if the thing is filled. This one obviously isn't. The well, uh, seal is still in this thing. There we go. Get that out.
That'll screw up. So we pump it up now, see what happens. So, I'm at 10 right now. I don't see any leaks when moving anything. So we'll continue to 15. And we are sitting at just past 15 PSI. So what I do now is I take a break, go eat some nachos or something, let it sit here, give it a uh, couple hours, and then uh, come back and make sure nothing leaked out of there. Well, here it is, quite some time later. Still holding the same amount of pressure. So, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a nice good lower unit again. Gears inside were inspected, resealed, and pressure tested. So, there's only really one thing left to do at this point, and that is to install the new screws. Screws are now a pretty Allen type instead of the old flathead, which I think is a little better. Also, they have two little built-in magnets. And what I like to do is have these things look all nice and pretty. So I'll be putting some touch up paint on there. So that's kind of the uh, the end of this one. Well, got some uh, touch up paint on the lower unit, at least one side, waiting for it to dry. Um, one thing you should know about this touch up paint, it is literally touch up paint. It is very thin. You can sand down the lower, you know, relatively good, and you'll see a whole bunch of different variations in the paint. The only way to really make this look, you know, new is to completely strip it down, primer it, and then paint it. If you look close enough, you can see a bunch of, you know, little old paint cracks and stuff. The lower unit will look, you know, ten times better with a, some touch of paint applied to it. Again, but prep is everything. This lower unit now ready to go. Um, hope you found this video helpful. Um, I'll put links at the bottom of the description to where you can get some of these tools and where you can get the seal kit. Uh, one thing you should know about those links, when you follow those links, I get a cut of the selling fees that they get from the seller. That money, as minimal as it is, helps support my outboard rebuilding hobby. So, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy those tools or those parts, whatever you're looking at. You can pretty much buy anything. So if you're going to go buy a vacuum cleaner and you're going to go on Amazon and you found this video helpful to reseal your lower unit, follow that link and then go buy your vacuum cleaner or car or whatever you're going to buy. Well, that's about it. If you've got any questions, comment below, email, however you want to do it. And have a good one.